This is for all you multi-talented, multi-tasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Find your glory, write your story, fearless we will carry you. Time you own it, take your moment, be a fire burning through. Hustling from night until morning, grinding it out, it won't be long. Feel your power, it's your hour, you inspire, you are strong. Enjoy your Zoa. No applause. <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. For years, people have been singing all about my chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Nobody has a love affair with chicken like you do with my slow marinated hand breaded Popeyes bonafide chicken. And right now it's Love That Chicken Month at Popeyes with two big pieces and a biscuit for just $2.99. So what are you waiting for? Come get some of my world famous chicken and raise your mighty voices. Love that chicken for Popeyes. I finally did it. Popeyes new chicken sandwich. Mm. I've been trying to make the perfect chicken sandwich forever. Um, how does that make you feel? You know me. It had to be just right. Mm -hmm. Finding a bun as good mm. as my chicken was not easy. Mm. I mean, I did it, obviously. I think we've made a lot of progress here. I feel great. Good talk. Mmm. I'm proud of you. My new chicken sandwich is buttermilk battered and served on toasted brioche. Try it in spicy or classic. Love that chicken from Popeye. Welcome to Copeland's. Copeland's is not just some fancy place for your big night out. In fact, there's no occasion too big. Or if you like, too small. Copeland's. There's always something good. What is this feeling? Ding, ding, ding. That everyone's feeling. Ding, ding, ding. With such feeling. Ding, ding, ding. This winning feeling. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. This tingle of success. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation of triumph. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation. Oh, I can feel it. This season, everyone gets the winning feeling. Win guaranteed prizes like 250 grand and more. Only at Dave and Buster's. Ding, ding, ding. What is this feeling? Ding, ding, ding. That everyone's feeling. Ding, ding, ding. With such feeling. Ding, ding, ding. This winning feeling. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. This tingle of success. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation of triumph. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation. Oh, I can feel it. This season, everyone gets the winning feeling. Win guaranteed prizes like 250 grand and more. Only at Dave and Buster's. Ding, ding, Well, hello, 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 and a good, good morning. Whoa! <laughs> well, I know my speakers are working this morning. Hey, good, 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 good morning, good people. I hope all is well. Welcome into another edition of Brayla Lee's virtual tour. Live is officially four minutes, four minutes after 11 a.m. Y'all, we got a jam-packed show for you this morning. Tyson Cole has a new um, story for us about superheroes cannot wait to tell you about that story eric adams he is the mayor of new york city but he met with some people at a place where well if i was the mayor i would not have met this brother or these people at this particular place but that's just me though we'll we'll, we'll talk about it for sure we will definitely definitely talk about it for sure then after that isaiah tickman well listen Sometimes when you do too damn much, you get caught up in your own itch. What did he do? I'm going to tell y'all all about it. Um, Taryn Collins, this six-year-old right here, he's six years old. I cannot wait to tell y'all about this amazing young man. And then Lily Lyons, 
from SWV, we got some things to talk about. Now, I, me and Lady B kind of talked this morning, and I said to her, y'all, this is such a live story. I, 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 <laughs> child, when I tell y'all how live it is, y'all going to be like, Bray, I know you are good liar. And I'm not. But we're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we got Pr Grind Pretty Fest, um, which is basically um, a black woman version of Invest Fest. Can't wait to tell y'all about that. And then finally, Invest Fest is back, everybody. That's right. You guys know the people from Earn Your Leisure, the gentleman from Earn Your Leisure. We got that and a whole lot more. Plus, no, and that's Real Housewives of Potomac News just broke as well. Oh, we're going to talk about it. Let me get, hang on, y'all. Oh, Lord. I was talking with my cousin on the phone, catching up with him because he's also in the entertainment industry as well. So we were just talking about um, stars, you know, canceling shows and stuff like that and catching him up on what I'm doing. And a big move that I made, I can't tell y'all about just yet, but trust me. Y'all know when I make moves, I don't miss, do I not? With that being said, higher is waiting, lower is available. But either way, we are live on tour, everybody. We are live on tour. Sorry, y'all. Chill. My behind this morning. Oh, my Lord. Okay, hang on, y'all. All right, y'all. Here we go. Let me take down this iconic intro here. And don't worry, we will see our friend Caesar soon. You see the virtual tour background, you hear the virtual tour music, and then there is, oh, sorry. There is me, hi everybody. <laughs> Good love to Jesus Almighty. Oh my Lord, hi everybody, I'm in your face right there. I'm just did it myself, hi, welcome in, glad to have all you here. All right, let's do what we do. So do not worry, we are gonna get to the Real Housewives of Potomac, because I have thoughts. I have many, many thoughts, okay? Okay, so let's get started here with this story from rollingout.com. <sighs> Woo, child, a lot going on. All right, child, this comes to us out from rollingout.com. Tyson Cole leads a group of super power infused black people in Supercell. Um, the latest project from Andrew Rapman Obulu um, is a sci-fi trip in which turn in which the tables turn for black people. Supercell is a new sci-fi series that poses a simple question. What happens when a group of black people mysteriously receive superpowers for no other reason than being black? Led by Tossin Cole, Bob Marley, One Love and House Party, the upcoming Netflix series is set in South London and follows the lives of a group of regular people who all surprisingly develop superpowers with no rhyme or reason other than the fact that they all happen to be black. The newly empowered clan then has to figure out how to go about their everyday lives as best as possible. Um, as best as possible. Oh yeah, while dealing with a group of shady government types who have taken note of their newfound abilities. Sorry, I'm trying to find my... Okay, there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, my cell phone. Um, creator, showrunner, Andrew Rapman Obulu, a big Marvel and DC Comics fan, said he created the series thinking if I got powers, the first thing, the first, my first thing would be to go with my spandex outfit. I was thinking, what if I could use my powers to put my family in a better position? As much as I love Marvel and DC, you know, I think it's going to, you know, it's going to work out in the end. But in our story, you just don't know what's going to happen because it's a grounded superpower show. Rapman said there are hero characters, but they're all flawed, but they're all very flawed. Rather, in addition to running the show, Rapman will helm the director's chair for several episodes alongside Sebastian Steele, um, Alo, Alo, Calvin Dimb. Eric Kofa Abrina and Nadi Mills rounding out the cast. The series is in is part of the Supercell 6 initiative founded by Rapman in conjunction with New Wave and Netflix. This initiative gives six specifically, this gives this initiative gives six specifically selected black creators to work alongside professionals in their field to get a bird's eye view from the inside, receive mentorship from professionals working in those industries. Supercell is scheduled today to be on Netflix in early June. So I'm going to 
So let me see here. I'm going to get the Supercell trailer up. Supercell. This came out six days ago. Because I don't want that. Mm -mm. Hang on, y'all. I'm going to show it here and play it here. Okay, hang on. All right, here we go. Let me turn it up. Are y'all ready? Here we go. Excuse me, beautiful. Whose car is this? Yours. Babe, this is so nice. Yeah, it just feels like the perfect time, you know? To go to the house. You just got a call. We're happy. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to pull about my future. I don't want to see you in a minute. You know what? I'm not mad at it. I'm here for it. Listen, listen, I think it's way past time for us to have um, shows about black superheroes. I mean, if you guys remember Black Lightning, which was on the CW with, um, <clears throat> and you know, I'm just going to have to do it. If you guys don't remember Black Lightning with, um, with um, this powerful woman, um, Lord Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Her name, her name, her name was Lady Eve. You heard her? Jesus. Listen, I could have been, mm, I could have been Lady Eve's, um, I could have been Lady Eve's Marka Lewinsky. Mm hmm. I said it. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, I could have been Lady Eve's, you know, Monica Lewinsky. Mm -hmm. Did you or did you not um, bite into Lady Eve's apple? Oh, no, I didn't bite. I um, I swallowed up, I devoured, and I got drenched in Lady Eve, okay? Listen, that's neither here nor there. Let's roll on, shall we? But, Tossin, but Super Set will be coming out this June of 2024 only on Netflix, child. Oh, this damn show I do. I love y'all so much. All right, let's roll on. More virtual tour live coming at you right from this space right here right now from blackenterprise.com. I'm going to let y'all read it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Y'all see it. Y'all see that, right? Y'all see that, right? Y'all see that, right? Y'all see that, right? <laughs> <laughs> New York City Mayor Eric Adams allegedly meet, meets with alleged drug dealers at local Burger King. Echo and Memphis Mayor cease fire talks with gangs. You're meeting with drug dealers at Burger King, sir? Hang on. I need to do this. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, this is the only thing I can think from this, okay? So, when y'all went to Burger King, right? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm just asking a question, okay? I'm just asking a quick question. When y'all went to Burger King, was, was this your order? I'll have two number nines. A number nine large. A number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large. <laughs> Was that your order, Eric Adams? I'm just one, one more time for the one more time. Just 
one more time. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six for extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with two. <laughs> That's probably what everybody did with Eric, Ad- with Mayor Eric Adams rather went to Burger King. What, what, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Mayor, what, 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 what you get one more time? I'll have two number nine, mm-hmm. a number nine uh-huh. large, a number okay, six extra. Okay, okay, I think that's enough. A number seven, Good damn. two number Yo. five, one with two. Uh-huh. And a large okay, so so you ain't gonna eat all that, right, Mayor? I, I I know you taking some of it back to the mayor's office. I let's get back on this damn story. I just <laughs> Young understands that the city needs several approaches to deal with violent crime in the city. That includes involving gang members in discussions on how to accomplish that. As the New York Post reports, New York City Mayor Eric Adams allegedly met with alleged drug dealers who are reportedly using a local Burger King at who are using a local Burger King as a headquarters for the operation. Wait a minute. Wait. 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 Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I gotta do this now. I gotta do this now. Y'all give me one moment. Now, obviously, I, I feel like some some someone is missing here. You know what I mean? I, I really do feel like someone is missing. So I'm going to bring in some people that I know. Because y'all know I know a lot of people, right? Y'all know I know a lot of people. I say this very respectfully. So can the king from Burger King and Chester Cheetah please tell us what's going on? I, I, ju- I just feel that's unrespectful. Mac and Cheetos are back. Cheetos flavor on the outside, creamy mac and cheese on the inside, only at Burger King. So, 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 can you please, Chester, gang, what? Okay, so y'all had a deal with some mac and Cheetos. So, so, so you were exchanging Coca Cola for mac and Cheetos? Okay, I get that it's returning, but what does cocaine have to do with this stuff? Mac and I can't get no back. damn Cheetos answers. on the outside, creamy mac and cheese on the inside. Only for <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. You know what did help though? The Burger King chain though. It did help though, King. And you know, with Chester just bobbing his head back and forth, like, yeah, yeah, this, 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 this is what we ordered. Yeah, this is the way it's supposed to go down. Chester, you are you already high on cheese, not cocaine, bruh. Good damn. Good damn, unless you're doing blood orange cocaine. I can't do it. Lord help. Oh. Coca Cola, y'all. In case y'all did not know, Coca Cola, just Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. So anyway, let's get back. So Nikki News, to let you know why I'm behaving this way, I'll let you read this. Okay, go go ahead, Nikki News. Go ahead, and then I'll continue. Go ahead, Nikki News. Just to let you know what's going on. Listen, okay. Listen, these people post these stories out here. I just talk about them, okay? 
I mind my own business. Okay. <laughs> okay okay nikki news you're good can I, can I get something from you in the chat that you're good please before i move on because i i gotta finish this story because we because we gotta get to some other things okay i'm, I'm gonna take you busting down the floor laughing as we can move on okay all right so, as the New York Post, Post reports, New York City Mayor um, Eric Adams allegedly met with alleged drug dealers who are reportedly using a local Burger King as a headquarters for their operations. A witness to the alleged meeting between the drug dealers and Adams told the Post that the meeting had lasted approximately an hour, 60 minutes, and police officers were also present at the meeting. So, basically, what happened was... So basically what happened was, listen, y'all, listen, y'all can have this meeting as, listen, y'all, y'all having this meeting and even though you may be getting. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45, one with cheese and a large soap. Even though y'all getting all that, ain't going to be no bull iggity going down at this Burger King. That's what the police officer said. You can have it here. You can order all that. But you ain't going to be doing a damn thing else. <laughs> they do They do have good shakes. You know what? There was a thing called a Cinnabon cheesecake that they had. Wow, masterpiece. Anyway, let's get back on this story. Um, a city hall um, spokesperson told the paper, um, Mayor Adams personally stopped by this past weekend to see the situation on the ground and to hear from employees, patrons, and locals. The first precinct has been and will continue to be responsive to community complaints. As Business Insider reports, Kevin Kaufman, a resident and condo owner in New York City, filed a $15 million lawsuit against Burger King. I know you. I know you lying. You have got to be lying. You know what? Listen, I, I I get the fact that, you know, allegedly, you know, this Burger King is being used as a headquarters, but you can't sue Burger King for that. You can't sue Burger King for that. Like that corporation has nothing to do with what those alleged drug deals are doing. But you know what? The king has heard your complaint. Um, the king has heard your complaint, Kevin Kaufman, and the king has something to say. King, what do you have to say about this lawsuit, sir? What, what, what do you have to say about this $15 million lawsuit? Okay, so obviously the king is very disappointed. Just, it, 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 it's done with the itch. It's done with it all. Oh my God, and a kick to your face. Mac and Cheetos oh, the king is not happy with this fifteen million dollar lawsuit. He is not happy at all, and he's coming back again. I can't, I can't do it. Cheetos are back. Cheetos flavor on the outside. Creamy mac and cheese on the inside. Only at Burger King. So obviously the king is not happy this morning with this damn story. Not happy at all. At all. At all. Coffee alleges that the restaurant has allowed professional drug dealers to operate with impunity. According to the lawsuit, the operation of the drug dealers at this Burger King attracts drug ads, drunks, and emotionally disturbed people who have been terrorizing the neighborhood for months. The lawsuit also alleges that the quality of life is crucial for neighborhoods well-being being has been jeopardized, profoundly harmed and destroyed by the nature of this illegal activity. New York City's um, Adams is not the only city leader to sit down 
um, with those whom some would say are driving in crime. In Memphis, um, Mayor Paul Young met with um, gang members in February to request a ceasefire. As WREG reports, Young's meeting was facilitated by Hill 901, a Memphis nonprofit head by the real called Colin. Colin, the executive director of the nonprofit, told WREG that the gangs need to be included in the conversation. We can't have conversations about how to help individuals without including them in a conversation. Doing violence intervention and prevention work, it's easy to be in contact with these individuals. And, and what we found out is that they were not hesitant in meeting with the mayor. Um, but once again, this is... Um, call back um and what we found out is that they were not hesitant in meeting with the mayor once again this was not something that was in negotiation Colin said it was hey we got to do something about crime i need a seven day ceasefire what would it take to bring your community to prevent these things from happening according to Cowan, it is important to his nonprofit that gang members are not dehumanized it is different gangs but due to the fact that me as well as my brother um david lane from 901 block squad we communicate on who we are bringing to ensure that there's no true rivals in the space to where they can be able to have the conversation safely, safe, safely and free. That's important. Cal continued, these people are humans out and they and don't think that they want to be out here. Sometimes the things that you see are a cry for help. That's very, very true. When we when we talk about see, when we talk about mental health and things of that nature, um, typically there's not a conversation until we see a situation that's happened. We got to get in front of these things. We have to. And the only way you're going to do that is by hearing from them directly. Young, for his part, understands that the city needs several approaches to deal with the violent crime of the city. And that includes a lot of gang members and discussions on how to accomplish that. As Young told Commercial Apparel, if we're going to talk about, about how we're going to reduce crime, I think it's important to engage those that have been directly involved young said it was really as simple as asking what would it take to get a seven-day ceasefire they expressed a willingness to do it young also said that there are some of the gang members ex some that some of the gang members right, expressed a hope that he would talk to other gangs that it would mean more coming from him than other members of gangs one of them expressed to me how powerful it was that we were sitting here how powerful it would be if we rather than relying on them to convey the message to those to other those that were in that are with the organization that i went and impressed it directly he said it would be so powerful for them to see me in their neighborhood because that's not kind of these young people want to see the decision makers they want to see the ones that have come from these neighborhoods and made out in several different ways or in different ways you know listen i know that we did some jokes about burger king okay but congratulations on this story, real talk, because at the beginning, middle, end of the day, we need to have us around so we can have a, us, right? And, you know, if y'all saw Gangland um, on Spike TV, now Paramount Network, they they went in deep and the history is long, hard and strong. But I think it's getting to the point where, you know, when you're losing innocent lives, and it's becoming a regular occurrence where there are some people that they have no mentality of not caring then it does deal with mental health at this point because it's one thing to protect your your squad but it's another thing when you hurt other people just to showcase your allegiance to the squad so congratulations um to eric adams and also um um sorry hang on to um yeah sorry congratulations to eric adams and also paul young um for doing the right lord help <sighs> this damn show i do anyway let's roll home y'all let's roll on shall we shall we oh by the way y'all here here it is here the, 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 so this was the um this was the meme right here so there's eric adams right there wait a minute wait a minute eric adams is so confused y'all see his face 
y'all see the face like wait what 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 you mean what what, what you mean my whoppers ain't here yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry y'all listen let's roll off let's roll off speaking of prison and things of that energy right this also comes to us from blackenterprise.com prison escape be captured by u.s marshals after playing a fitness workout um ty tyman was originally arrested on drug related charges isaiah tightman a 33 year old prison escapee was captured on march 22nd in philadelphia after u.s marshals and fugitive task forces in philadelphia and pittsburgh facilitated the arrest in conjunction with philadelphia police as cbs news reports tyman was arrested at approximately 11 a.m you know what I'm not doing this. There's a lot of things that happened at 11 a.m. as we can clearly see after leaving a plant fitness location in Philly. Um, you United States Marshals Philly arrested Western Pennsylvania escapee Isaiah Thyman, 33 this morning in the third in the three hundred the third three thousand three hundred block of Ar Arnamingo Avenue, Philadelphia. Thyman escaped from the Blair County prison on the December 3rd, 2023, after being arrested on drug-related charges and uh, Pennsylvania parole um, violations. So I will see if I can get these images up for you guys here. So here it is here. Here's him being taken in by U.S. Marshals. Literally at Planet Fitness. So as he was getting pumped up, they pumped up on him and arrested him. Good damn. Good damn. Just there he is there. Oh, Lord Jesus. According to an announcement from Robert Clark, the de the supervised the supervisory deputy U.S. Marshal for east for the eastern pennsylvania task force this arrest was a result of the future task forces of philadelphia and pittsburgh diligently working together to capture a dangerous escapee clark and the marshal service is unequivocally the best in the business of finding people who do not wish to be found this arrest reinforces that fact time originally escaped from the blair county prison in hollidaysburg pennsylvania on december 3rd 2023 he had been arrested on drug related charges as well as a parole violation before he escaped the custody of the prison at the time of his escape according to the blair county prison board tyman had been incarcerated but not yet sentenced since his recapture he's been charged to escape He's been charged with escape, flight to avoid fight to avoid apprehension, among other charges. Fox 29 believes that investigators believe that Tyman had traveled in excess of 200 miles to get away from Hollidaysburg to Philadelphia, where he was captured. After a red Ford truck matches the description of one Tyman allegedly stole was found in Philadelphia on March 20th. Marshals were able to identify a black BMW he was allegedly using and follow him to the gym. Once time and emerged from Plant Fitness, he was surrounded by more than 20 U.S. Marshals agents and, and summarily arrested. According to um, ABC6, Tama is in custody in an undisclosed location and authorities are allegedly planning to make an argument to revoke Tyman's bail. Wow, 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 wow. Y'all give me one moment. Hang on. Sorry, y'all. Had to blow my nose. Um, you know, oh, man. Like, here's the thing. I get you gotta make a dollar out of 15 cent, but also too, like, you gotta realize like the drugs that you are selling in your community also de destroys your community. You know, I remember, you know, mothers against drunk driving and you know, drug the school program and all that stuff. And um, you don't hey, so I'm talking Louisiana. Chick three away. Good to see you, beautiful. Glad to have you here. Um, I love it when she calls us tourists. And you are one too. Love you, Queen, as always. Y'all like, comment, share, subscribe to that sister. Beautiful, beautiful soul. I love her very much. Um, and she really, really is good people. Um, but yeah, I just out of all places to be arrested at Planet Fitness, bro. Like, Not to mention you used a stolen truck, which they already identified you having. Like, dude, like, 
I'm not saying that you got to be smart in order to still get away with stuff because I don't believe in that. Do the right thing all the time and the right thing will always come back to you. But dude, at Planet Fitness, man, he was probably pumping some iron or walking on the treadmill or running on the treadmill and they ran up on him. So anyway, y'all, um, we're going to take a little bit of a commercial break. We'll be right back with more right after this. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. We are live on tour. Roll it. Caesar. Just look at him. Politician. General. Author. Ruler. Man. Legend has it, he's not only stared into the belly of the beast, he's had it for dinner. Here he's free to relax, or party, or relax, or party, or relax, and party. His is a world of opulence. And the occasional impulse buy. Not one to rest on his laurels, he's famous for ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this awaits. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace. I got a question for you. What does this city know about luxury? Huh? What does a town that's been to hell and back know about the finer things in life? Well, I'll tell you, more than most. You see, it's the hottest fires that make the hardest steel. Add hard work and conviction and the know-how that runs generations deep in every last one of us. That's who we are. That's our story. Now, it's probably not the one you've been reading in papers, the one being written by folks who've never even been here and don't know what we're capable of. Because when it comes to luxury, it's as much about where it's from as who it's for. Now, we're from America, but this isn't New York City, or the Windy City, or Sin City, and we're certainly no one's Emerald City. city and this is what we do I finally did it Popeye's new chicken sandwich I've been trying to make the perfect chicken sandwich forever. Um, how does that make you feel? You know me. It had to be just right. Mm -hmm. Finding a bun as good mm -hmm. as my chicken was not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did it, obviously. I think we've made a lot of progress here. I feel great. Good talk. Mmm. 
I'm proud of you. My new chicken sandwich is buttermilk battered and served on toasted brioche. Try it in spicy or classic. Love that chicken from Popeyes. Hey, grab me one too. Loving it. I am loving it too. Hey, everybody, welcome back into Braley's Virtual Tour Live. Yes, you guys did see me do this. So, this is a little tick I have. Um, I've always had this tick, just you know, I'm very fidgety, but you know, also too, it kind of helps when I'm emphasizing points and stuff. But anyway, welcome back in, everybody. Glad to have all you here. So, we just got done talking about Isaiah Teichman, who just who got arrested by you. U.S. Marshals after breaking out of a jail, got arrested at Planet Fitness. Eric Adams met with some alleged um, drug dealers at a Burger King. And um, the King and Justin Chia came through and spoke on some of the things in the story, or spoke to and about some of the things on the story, gave their take. And uh, Tossin Cole has a new show called Super Sale um, about black people <clears throat> having superpowers. That's coming out on Netflix of June of 2024. So, with that being said, let's roll. We have more virtual draw live coming at you. Y'all, I love giving good news. I really do. Blacknews.com. <clears throat> Six-year-old black boy, first grader with super high IQ accepted into Mensa. <clears throat> so, so excited to tell y'all this story. Um, nationwide, meet Toreen Collins. <clears throat> A six-year-old boy from Monroe, Louisiana, who was making history after achieving acceptance into Mensa after overcoming early hearing challenges. By the way, beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful child right there. Torin, who's only a first grader, who, who was only a first grader, has been accepted into Mensa, a group that celebrates individuals scoring in the top 2% on standardized tests. Torin journeys to, the, to this achievement is extraordinary. His parents recall how he began reading at the age of two overcoming hearing difficulties <clears throat> he wasn't really talking i don't think he was saying 10 words his mother jessica collins shared according to action news five we will look at that story here in just a minute after consulting with dr soren went <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry underwent surgery to address his hearing issues transforming his world from muffled sounds to clear speech and vibrant conversations since then, Tor um, Tarin hasn't stopped impressing. His mom proudly shared a video of him easily reading sentences. She wrote, showcasing his advanced skills. Looking ahead, Tarin drinks big. He aspires to be both a NFL player and an astronaut. Go ahead. I don't think that's actually ever been done. But I'm just kind of wondering, like, how is he going to do that, you know, playing in the NFL, being an astronaut? So I guess, hey, welcome back, Lady Beam. Talking about this beautiful um, young black king right here. Talking about. It's a beautiful young black king named um, Torin Kyle. He's six years old from Monroe, Louisiana, and he got accepted to Mensa, a group that celebrates individuals scoring in the top 2% on standardized tests. So for those of you who do not know what Mensa is, so Mensa um, International is the largest, hang on if it'll come up here. There we go. Is the largest and oldest high IQ society in the world. It is a nonprofit open to people who score at the 98th percentile or higher or higher on a standardized supervised IQ or other approved intelligence tests. They've been around since 1946 and they have over they have around 150,000 members of all ages in one in 90 plus countries worldwide. So um so Tarin Collins had some hearing, early hearing challenges, and um, he wasn't really talking. I don't think he was saying more than 10 words his mother, Jessica Collins, shared. Um, Tarin underwent surgery, and so now he is able to hear clearly just fine. And he aspires to both be an NFL player and an astronaut. So, my Lord, like, if you're playing in the NFL and being an astronaut, you, that's a that's a coordinated schedule. You heard? I'm sorry, y'all, I can't play this Sunday. I got to go up into space. You know, I'm doing big things. 
with plans to attend college early, aiming for Harvard at age 13. We're going to do whatever um, we have to to get him there, his mother said. So here is the story from um, from Action News 5 here. Roll it. Can you imagine being part of an elite club that only 2% of the world's population is qualified to join, no matter your age? That would be pretty significant. In this edition of What's Your Story, I introduce you to the smartest kid in the room. What do you... He's such a funny kid. Uh, he brightens your day. Hot dog. Fun <laughs> has a way of following first grader Terry and Collins. I look at the lights and look at you. I cannot even see you. <laughs> <laughs> the I love it. It's easy to find. Torian, what is 67 minus 54? 13. 13. Great job. Oh, you can't man. stop this kid. He also comes armed with a joker, too. Why did the hamburger go Why? to the gym? Why? So he could get better guns. <laughs> <laughs> Four years ago, Terry's That's mother cute. was not laughing. He wasn't really talking. He was mama, dada, and that was a little iffy. Uh, I don't think he was saying 10 words. A mother's intuition led to a trip Amazing. to the pediatrician. He needs his adenoids taken out. He needs tooth placed in his ears. Right now, he's hearing and it sounds oh, like he's Lord. underwater. So everything sounds mumbled to him. Wow. His speech is mumbled. Three months later. <laughs> Sounds like somebody we know, huh? <laughs> to the astonishment of his parents, Terrian started reading as a two-year-old. I called him in the room and I said, hey, can you read this to me and tell me what it says? <laughs> With his test scores off the chart, Terrian applied to Mensa. It's an organization that recognizes people that score in the 98th percentile in standardized testing. He's the perfect candidate for a program like that. I mean, these are the most intelligent people in the world, and he fits right on in that group. We're delighted to let you know that you qualify. A lot of people don't get this, and I get this. So, you know, I'm pretty important, and I said, <laughs> okay. Get termites or insects. This kid has taken his newest honor in stride. What, what did you say? I probably had a chance of it, mm -hmm. and I did. He is a character, trust yes. me. He is He is definitely different. <laughs> what other state is like Hawaii? Alaska. He has now set some modest goals. You have to keep him on his toes, you know, because if we don't, he's going to keep us on our toes. <laughs> First off, Dak Prescott. He just wants to become an NFL player who mm. moonlights as an astronaut. That is once he takes the fast track through college. Of course, he said he's going to Harvard at 13. So we're going to do whatever we have to do to get him to Harvard at 13. What? Beautiful smile there. That's Terry and story. What is yours? I'd love to tell it. Just drop me an email at aaron.dietrichgame.com. Thank you so much, Aaron, for that beautiful story. And, um, you know, this is why I got into the industry, right? Um, man, man, man. I, um, I was also on, um, I was also on TV at one point in time. It was a anti-bullying conference and, um, and man, I was, it was, it was a, very very bad um thing right and um man man it was crazy um so my my sister she had a um teacher it was a boy conference and i um i was on fox 16 news and thv and um it's very important to know that kids have power and during that time, I was trying to find out who I was. And I was just like, wow, so this is a job, you know, getting to talk to people, getting to learn things, get paid to do it. 
And you're probably wondering, well, Braylon, what does you being on TV have to do with this kid being on TV? I think this kid is going to be bigger than an astronaut and somebody in the NFL. I mean, did you see that personality? I could definitely see him having a huge uh, media career. You know what? Honestly, I wish Little Big Shots was still on TV. I really do, because honestly, that kid could have been on Little Big Shots. And for those of you who may not remember um, Little Big Shots, let me. Let me give y'all a little preview of what Little Big Shots was. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to find like a short clip of it. So for those of you who don't know what Lil Big Shots was, yeah. wow. So why do you love Abraham Lincoln so much? He believed that all men are created equal. He fed the cat with a gold fork. Yeah. If it's good for Lincoln, it's good for Tabby. <laughs> So this show was basically Steve Harvey talking to kids from all over the world. And um, it, it was him and Elder Generous that teamed up to do this show. It was a huge hit on ABC. I mean, this was when Steve Harvey was doing Little Big Shots, his talk show, Family Feud. Um, he did Steve Harvey's Thunderdome. He was doing a lot of, I think he had like seven shows on TV at one time. So this was great. I wish Little Big Shots was still around because that kid, definitely would have made it on little big shots um so shout out to um steve harvey and ellen for creating that show of little big shots all right y'all so lady b you remember when we talked this morning how i told you that there was a big story child so i'm going to show y'all this right so there was a story <sighs> lord jesus so here it is here right so this was confirmed by the Jasmine brand right now I had the screenshot now for those of you who may not see that that is Lily saying where is this coming from this is not true at all please check with reliable sources I'm sorry you were misinformed and then of course you see T-Talk with your girl there shout out to T-Talk with your girl there I'm going to be meeting um, Lily at the Mimosas with Melody right so here's how real it was right so let's see so here it is here. So I had it and the link was there, but when I refreshed it, it was gone, y'all. Like, I'm not even joking with y'all. It was absolutely gone. And so, so here's the thing, right? Somebody is not being truthful in the Kool-Aid. Like, and y'all know I put the links in my description box all the time, right? So, when I so when I went so when I went to it though, when I clicked it, it just went it just went back to this. So that link is no longer there at all. It's no longer there at all. Um, which listen, I some something in the Kool Aid ain't sweet here. So I need to know what's going on. So it's been seen by ten people. Now, of course, um, you know, I don't see um, I don't see um, Lily or the Jasmine brand seeing this story yet. But I thankfully I got the screenshot. So don't know if it's coming back or not. But I just I just I just asked, you know what I mean? So but trust me, it, it's not there, y'all. Like, literally. And the, and how I found out it wasn't there, I literally went to the Jasmine brand on my phone. And I did not see the story there anymore. I did not see the story there anymore. But here is something here. Apparently, SWV and Escape are going on tour together. <laughs> 
So wait a minute. They're going on tour together. But yet, but yet, but yet, um, there's a show. There's not a show. What's going on here? I need. We need to know what's going on. Because my thing is this. You can't just post that and then take it down. So what is going on? Like, real talk. I just need to know. But who's going to open the show? Um, that part, we don't know who's going to open up the show. Did that girl pay um, her sister the money she stole from her? There's an extra person in this picture. No, it's not. That's Coco. That's Tosh. That's Lily. That's Tiny. That's Candy. That's Latonka. And that's Ta- 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 Taisha Scott. There, there's nobody extra... There's nobody extra in the photo. Unless they're trying to be funny. They were trying to be funny. I cannot. I simply cannot. They're about to be coined up after this tour. That part. This again. Do not bring Lataka, please. And thank you. Yes, sounds like grown. Sounds like some grown woman talk. What now behind the scenes here for it? SWV better be headlining. Isn't the market not saturated enough? Ain't no music. So here's the thing. These two are so good, they can go out on tour with all, with all their catalog and still be good. You know what I mean? Um, they could do a Vegas residency and they would sell out. You hear? So, listen. Okay. And you know what? Honestly, to tell you the truth, if Beyonce really did do her residency at the um, MSG Sphere, and Destiny Child was a part of some of the nights of her residency. Oh my God, it would be sold out without question. Are you kidding? So there is that, y'all. So, like I said, I don't know if the Jasmine brand is going to address the story um, not being up anymore, but it says it right here. And I also have the screenshot right here. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it was not there. Um, when I when I when I refreshed it, so I just want y'all to know that. Now listen, I usually break. Now sometimes I break stories, but this one was so live in real time, I could not believe it. So there you go. All right, y'all. More virtual tour live coming at you right from this space right here and right now. This was um, Grind Pretty Fest 2023. You see some of the people there, and of course. Nazinga Amani was there as well. Um, Grime Pretty partners with Wells Fargo to award grants to women entrepreneurs. Pitch competitions are a great way for star businesses to gain capital. Grime Pretty is a media publication and community-driven outlet founded by Mimi Johnson. Their mission is to encourage female founders to take a holistic approach to launching and elevating their brands. Each year, the Grime Pretty organization hosts an event, Grime Pretty Fest, where they gather like-minded individuals for a day of live music performances, interactive panels, and workshops, awards, brunch, and a $5,000 grant competition powered by Wells Fargo. Last year, the organization awarded $10,000 to women of color starting their businesses to be eligible for the grant opportunity, you must attend the event in person or virtually, have an active Instagram account, prepare prepare an elevator pitch, and create a promotional video during Grind Pretty Fest. One tip we do recommend is to practice what you say. That means developing a script and go for it. This competition isn't something you want to be unprepared for. We suggest you deliver your pitch to a friend, mentor, or other biz, another business owner who can provide feedback to ensure that your message is clear. Lastly, be memorable. The organization and shared to encourage attendees to try the pitch competition. The Grind Prairie Fest will feature guest speakers like Natalie Caulfield to help teach a financial literacy masterclass to attendees. There will also be a female DJ segment. Two women of color um, like Tracy, DJ Tracy Steele, DJ uh, Princess Cut, um, DJ Queen of Spades and more who give us some of the best music to vibe. Tickets are still available for purchase Virtually and in person, the Grand Prairie Fest occurred in Atlanta, April um, April twenty second to twenty twenty um, April twenty second to twenty third of twenty twenty three from twelve to nine p.m. I think they're going to have the event again. Yeah, they're going to have the event again, April thirteenth and fourteenth in Atlanta, Georgia. So here is the pre Grand Fest competition right there. Must have a ticket. And attend the fest in person must be a female founder for operating business um airing this contest does not guarantee you to win 
Um, we were select three finalists to do a 60 second elevator pitch in person during the event Sunday, April 14th. So you must be able to attend in person to pitch. Deadline for submission is April 5th at Lefty 59 Eastern. Finalists will be announced on Saturday, April 13th during Grand Prix Fest or Art of Pitching um, session. Good luck. And so here it is here. All the people that will uh, be here for it. So, and we see Stormy still will be there, as you can see. Don't know if that's, uh, no, I don't think that's uh, Tasha. And then, of course, there's the gorgeous Nzinga Amani. There's um, Raza uh, uh, Ali. She was on uh, Sister Circle Live. I'm trying to see who else I know. I think that's about it. So right here, as you see, Nzinga Amani, Rasha Ali, um, you see many people, Jade and Nova, DJ Tracy, still all of them. I'm surprised that um, DJ Spinderella is not going to be at this thing. I think she should be there. And then, of course, you see Stormy still. Oh, Lord Jesus. That should be interesting. Mm -hmm. But, yes, you can grab your tickets. And as you saw there, um, open bar food trucks um, will be there as well. This will be at the West Side Cultural Arts Center. took a leap of faith and i think when god plants something inside of you eventually no matter how much you try to ignore it or go down different paths it's eventually going to tug at you enough where it gets your attention and don't understand the journey as it's happening in real time and we're constantly like god why, why are you taking me down this path what's the lesson in this i believe in doing your passion i believe in living out your purpose and a lot of times we get stuck in what we feel is safe or what we feel is going to pay the bills and we're not happy i believe in being happy with your life and doing what you love and when you do that it doesn't feel like work anymore be smart about it don't just up and quit your job like i did <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. Grinding Pretty is a woman who is about her business, who is not afraid to get her hands dirty, who is not afraid of hard work, and someone who's pretty well doing Hi, I'm Krista Renee, and thanks for Grinding Pretty with me. So for those of you who don't know Krista Renee, she was um, a wardrobe stylist at Tyler Perry Studios. And so, you know, she's always wanted to act, and so... Tyler, you know, she auditioned a couple of times and she is a legend. So um, just wanted to shout her out there. And her story is quite amazing. I mean, to go from a wardrobe designer to, you know, to finally being able to act in, in, and live out her dream, like my Lord Jesus, what an amazing thing there. Um, here is the link tree here. Um, you see uh, bookkeeping and tax prep 50% off. So I will drop um, the link here for Grind Pretty in the chat. Y'all, and listen, y'all know we try to always elevate over here with everything that we do. We try to showcase black excellence, black entrepreneurship. Actually, it will tell you the truth. One of the businesses that I featured actually reached out to me on Instagram. No joke. Legitimately no joke so here is ryan pretty fest here hang on this is this so this is the recap of grind pretty fest here okay I let's check that down after me i am humongous i am resourceful i am much better than ever could be i am the substance of everything hopeful i am the proof of what's never been seen i am so beautiful i am responsible i am enough and my soul is complete more than just suitable i am a conqueror worthy of love that is whole and complete and that's on me for the girls getting money it's for the girls who don't need no man This is for the girls who love with yourself This is for all the girls that did it by themselves This is for all the girls that's I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-N-D -E -E -D -D. This is for all the girls that be living stress-free So there you go. So this is Grind Pretty Fest 2024 here. So West Side Cultural Arts Center. Let's look that up so you guys can see what where that actually is there. And then here is the West Side Cultural Arts Center here. Right here, here are some images. Now listen, I'm not gonna lie, this is a lively space. I ain't mad at it. This is what's up, I'm here for it. So this is where it will be here. 
Now, of course, you know, the tickets are 50 to 250 bucks. Um, and I love it, the complete fourth season. As you can see, if you know what those letters are, or if you know the style of those letters, we are living, singing, oh, in a 90s kind of world. I'm glad I got my girl. Okay, now listen. Before y'all say, don't disrespect Queen Latifah. I know I can't rap, okay? We don't, we ain't gotta say the quiet part out loud. Y'all ain't gotta be that rude to me. And y'all ain't gotta be that real with me, okay? Good damn. Anyway, here's some sponsors here. UPS, African Pride, Wells Fargo, um, PE. Don't know who PE is, but I'm sure they're a great uh, black organization that's doing great um, work for the good in the neighborhood. And Lou Belair France um, Champagne. So there you go. Oh, they're going to have a Trap Yoga Bay um, session. Um, that is what's up, Amazing Swag Bags. Immersive Brand Activations is a shopping experience as well. Um, they're going to have workshops on um, pitching and gaining capital, business credit, financial literacy, growing engagement, community, artificial intelligence, technology, and more. And so there you go. They're going to honor some people here. Um, Melissa Proctor, VP and Chief Marketing Officer of the Atlanta Hawks. Now, listen, I'm not telling y'all what to do, but if you are a woman, get your business cards, get your resumes, and hustle. Do you hear me? Hustle. Because here's the thing, right? Even though all these people are in positions of power and yeah, even though these women are in positions of power and they finally have found a solution for their life to get to where they are, that doesn't mean they don't have problems. You could come through as a solution and you could be right where they are. So please, please hustle your way down to this thing. Um, and so get tickets. So here it is here. General Saturday pass $100. Um, this ticket includes general mission to the festival Saturday, April 13th, open bar event sponsored by Bel Air, live musical performances, um, eligible entry to the 5K competition, shopping, expert workshops and panels, VIP ticket, um, two day, um, this event, this ticket includes entry for both days, reserve seeing food at the Visionary Awards brunch, um, two open bar events sponsored by Bel Air and VIP swag, and then Sunday only here, um, this gets you into the food for the food for the visionary brunch, the the rose mimosa swag gift and Sunday entry music portion here. Um, two hour open bar access and performances include Shy Speaks, Gloss Up, Jay Nova, and 702 access to photo activations in our exclusive uh, founder marketplace, and then early bird VIP, which is sold out. Now that now that price for VIP. That's a good price because it included both days for entry, a seat and food at the Visionary Awards brunch and VIP Grand Prix box. Now, I know for some of y'all, well, Brent, I can't afford 250 bucks. For 250 bucks, you could be at this luncheon where, guess what? You could be hanging out with the VP and CMO of the Atlanta Hawks and State Farm Arena. Imagine if you, you were a music artist and you wanted to perform at the State Farm Arena. Nzinga Amani and Rashad Ali are both on Tyler Perry shows. All these other people here, they got companies. I, if you spend $250 on a wig or a purse or whatever the hell matters to you, that $250 could take you from a zero to a hero. Hashtag just like that. Understand? I'm trying to help y'all win. Hell. I'm just saying. <sighs> That's all I'm saying. Like, you know, and I know people are going to say, well, Braylon, you should go down there. I'm sorry. First of all, it's for women. I'm not going to disrespect a woman's space by going to a woman's space. Good damn. But if I did, I would go through the support because guess what? Black women deserve to know that black men support them. So speaking of um, thing, Invest Fest is happening at the World George at the Georgia World Congress Center. Building C presale. Get your tickets, shawty. Here's get your tickets. Je presale general admission, August 23rd through the 25th. Um, investor general mission includes Invest Fest access Friday through Sunday at the Georgia World Congress Center. 
um, vendor marketplace access Friday through Sunday. That's two hundred fifty dollars plus fees. So see, two hundred fifty bucks for Invest Fest, two hundred fifty bucks for VIP. If you want to, if you want to go high, you have to give higher. Okay. Pre-sale general pre pre-sale VIP admission, two thousand dollars plus fees. VIP admission includes Invest Fest access Friday through Sunday at the Georgia World Congress Center. Vendor Marketplace access Friday through Sunday. VIP private event, which is where all the celebrities are going to be, and you can network. Hello, hello, hello. Trying to help y'all. Musical performance, fireside chat, exclusive swag bag. VIP C Saturday and Sunday. Pre-sale platinum VIP admission, five thousand um, dollars. This includes vendor um, via Invest Fest access Friday and through Sunday at the Georgia World Congress Center. Vendor marketplace access Friday through Sunday. VIP event, musical performance, fireside chat, exclusive swag bag, VIP seating um, Saturday, Sunday. Priority seating at VIP night. VIP platinum lounge access which also will be where celebrities and other people will be where you can access throughout the event. Um, autograph memorabilia and meet and greet with Earn Your Leisure. By the way, at that Earn, by the way, at that meet and greet, give them your business card. Say, I do not mind coming on your YouTube channel to give something to invest into your platform. I'm just saying. And then pre-sale lifetime admission, $10,000. Um, you get all those things plus lifetime VIP access, which means... Every time invest invest happens, you get VIP admission. Okay, just that y'all should know. Um, vendors, if you want to be on the wait list, right here, first last name, email, phone number, and are you human? And send there, and then we will go to their Instagram. Listen, I, I try to I try to make sure that y'all um, that y'all got it. You know what I mean? And here's Earn Your Leisure's Instagram. There it is there. And so they had a contest um, where, you know, they were trying to figure out where they could go. Um, and honestly, the contest was really, really cool. Let me see. Right here. So this happened March 11. Now, I did not know about this right now. I, I, well, I did not know about this. It says, calling entrepreneurs. We want to know why InvestFest should come to your city. Right here. Post an Instagram video on why InvestFest should be in your city. And tell us about your business. Tag earn tag invest festival and earn your leisure the participant with the best video and whose city is chosen will earn five thousand dollars toward their business and a free booth at invest fest 2024 entries valid up till march 17th at 11 59 p.m now honestly my thing is this the thing that the thing that's crazy to me is they just went back to atlanta so what was the point of this contest, right? Like, I'm just saying, like, no disrespect to InvestFest, but like, you see DC, you got Chicago, you got Houston, right here. Keep it in, keep it in Atlanta, fam. No, there are other places that deserve InvestFest. Little Rock, Arkansas would be amazing for InvestFest. Philadelphia, Palm Bluff, Arkansas, right? Two likes, shout out to Palm Bluff, Arkansas, home of the mighty golden lines from UAPB, like Vegas, DC, New York City, like y'all can't do a competition asking for, you know, where should we go? And then y'all just go back to Atlanta where y'all been doing it. Like, come on now, New Orleans, Louisiana, like, listen, I ain't mad at, I think it was a great contest, but seriously though, like what, 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 what was this free market research? Just saying, anyway. <laughs> Oh, for sure. And you know what? Here's the thing, too, right? At the beginning, middle, end of the day, just because you may not be able to go doesn't mean you'll never be able to go. Like Cap Williams said, God will put you in the hallway with your blessing when it's time. He meant to say that God will put me and Kevin Hart in a hallway when it's time. But yeah, so I just, I just, 
just thought that would be kind of cool um, to share with you all there. So here is a positive news story here. Says to me, workshop names Danny Hill for chief people officer. Um, Sesame Street Pair Company, Sesame, um, Sesame Workshop has named Danette Danny Hill as his first chief people officer. In this newly created role, Hill will oversee human resources, leading a division that best support that, that supports innovative best practices and organizational excellence for Sesame Workshop per um, the global impact nonprofit hill is based in new york and will report directly to sesame street workshop and interim um ceo sherry Weston. the company has the executive search firm and is currently looking for a permanent ceo following the february exit of steve youngwood most recently hill served as schmidt figures group vice president and head of people and culture prior to that role she was the chief human resources officer at planned parenthood hill has also held positions as chief of Human resources at nonprofit organization Child Fund, and as a Pfizer Global Health Fellow that worked with the Ministry of Health in Nairobi, Kenya. Through her extensive leadership roles and accomplishments across a variety of organizations, Danny has demonstrated a expertise in optimizing the employee experience, recruiting top talent, and building an exceptional human resources team. Weston said, we are excited to have her guide the strategy and operations of the organization's HR department to help us deliver a workshop's mission of helping all children grow smarter, stronger, and kinder. Hill added, I'm thrilled to have this unique opportunity to enjoy an insp inspiring, mission-driven nonprofit organization doing groundbreaking early childhood development work across the globe. I look forward to working with the HR leadership teams to ensure Sesame Street Workshop continue excellence and success. Congratulations. First of all, shout out to Sesame Workshop for hiring um, someone black and not doing it for diversity, equity, and inclusion, but because it was the right thing to do. And not to mention, did y'all see this? in this newly created role if a position is not there if you good enough if you're qualified enough if you have enough super in you or i'm sorry if you have enough natural in you god will figure out a way to put his super on your natural come on now listen this is what we do around here yes indeed yes indeed yes indeed yes indeed man I love our damn show don't y'all <laughs> we cover anything and everything like we look we went from a whole black series about superheroes coming out on netflix to talking about a black woman working at sesame street workshop come on come on come on that's what we do we mixed it in with some burger king with a being at burger king with drug dealers and somebody getting arrested at you know, Planet Fitness. But we also mixed it in with a breaking story about is there a season two of SWV and Escape or not? And then we also added a six-year-old who is in Mensa and who can hear. Like, come on. Come on. And see, this is why I get so pissed off at people who cause chaos and destruction and toxicity and say, oh, and then and then when they get caught, oh, YouTube is not fun anymore. Oh, it's so difficult. Da, 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 da. This, that, this, that, all around the world. I, I, I. No, it's difficult for you. It's not fun for you. It's exhausting for you because of the energy that you put out because that's who you are as a human being. It ain't hard for the rest of us who are actually doing what we're supposed to do. In the words of Sheree, who's going to check me, boo? Not nobody if they know what's good for their own fucking mental health. Understand? Capiche? Kaput? In the words of Karen here, we good? Hashtag hasta la vista. Anyway, speaking of housewives. Speaking of housewives, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Oh, wait a minute. The Jasmine Brand is live right now. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a while. Yeah, how, how long do you think before? Um, I think to have a successful business, you need five years. Five years. Five okay. years. Five years. So, well, these other companies that's popping that we gave them their, their sauce in their 50s. You gave other people the blueprint. I gave them the fucking shows. Who'd you give the shows to? He did daddy's. 
baddies, mm-hmm. the conversation, one more chance. The first Zeus fight was Roly. I like how he looked at you like you were Was Roly okay. and Mangina. <laughs> Mangina. The second fight we you gave them, Mangina the second now. fight in Zeus history uh-huh. is Masika and Hazel Lee. Oh, I forgot about that. That's all me. Okay, gotcha. If you go to season one of Baddies, the first thing you see when the whole shit starts off in the history of it, mm-hmm. Ray J. Well, I mean, your preview, you had somebody using a pow pow. Well, um, I think I, using and a pow pow and everybody. pow pow and yeah. got a it's car. Just now we got another network, and we we, yeah, have, a, we have a new. Like, did you not see your and own this preview game is for about, your network, you know, Ray J? Talking your shit and competing. Uh, and, yeah, like rappers. So yeah, be talking your like, shit. I, I, like I said, I want every reality star to have their own network and then y'all can fight network to network mm. that's what? fighting 100 million 100 million yeah right yeah. i'm trying to put us on the map a different way okay we put too much on the line okay so ray j um in closing where's your are you want a little bit more okay. i like this i like the. i like i like our show okay you remember we st- remember me it was me you and me you and Ange heard like first at the beginning uh, no let's in do let's I, I got this this is before where's new main new main before it was new main was ray j i mean Mano's i ain't gonna lie go to main you know we we all had the penthouse ray party the that was main said you know what i'll take it from here <laughs> wait i heard radio <laughs> rolling like that Mano came to your party and took your spot I know, oh I wait, this might be the wait. Is this the green room or is this the studio? Now it's being renovated. Y'all can drink in the studio like that. Is it time for us to go back? Three minutes. All right. Well, listen. Angela is over there babysitting her her drink. Man, this is eat, like I would love this. They are drinking tequila on the air. What the hell? Angela, I feel like you kind of been quiet. I uh, know. I was ordering pizza. Can you say something? It's all hot, honey. Uh. Uh-huh. I didn't see hot and honey. I don't I'm think sorry. they got that in New York, bro. I didn't Girl, see we it. We tried to order it. Nah, in Harlem, we didn't have it. Excuse me, Angel. Can you talk just for a moment? Do y'all got hot and honey? What is Let me this tell you. Um, Do y'all got hot and honey out here? On, on, um, and, um, in, 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 New York? in New York, I love it in Vegas. And can you say something? Is, I do love Vegas. Though. Angela. Ray J, you got to get a place in New York. I was just looking at something. You gonna do Manhattan? I was just gonna rent something in that. Yeah. Um, it was uh, somewhere on Park. They are okay, let's not talk about where you rent from. Okay, guys. Why are we drinking so early? Don't judge us. Judge your mama. I hope your mama's still alive. Wow. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Okay, Jazz. That's I'm a little loving much. the haircut, Angie. That's a little much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What haircut? You, maybe your bang. Oh, that's old. Okay. But thank you. Okay, I just saw the trailer. Oh my God. Tequila for breakfast is the absolute best. I'm from Philly, been living in Vegas for three years. In our fairness, it's like almost 1230. It is. It's 1222. Yeah. So this is what oh. they're drinking on. Resposal, Hornitos Resposal tequila. Ciao. You too. How, how long do we have before we go on? No judgment. We twin it. Okay. All right. Who is AJ? Oh, Ray J. You meant to say Ray J. Okay. Ray J. Ray J. Love you. Okay. All right, oh, guys. That's cool. Yeah. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. I love you. That's his other voice. No. Just... You should do Maury type show on the network where women trying to find out who the baby daddy is. I love that. That's, that's so original. <laughs> nah, for real. Fuck it. Right. That should be number one. People I mean, love your at, sister, Brandy. I mean, yeah. Oh, Ask you. Ray who's the next star on Tronix. Um, who the next star? It's a lot of stars. Somebody, coming it's the, out the person that asked that name has made you hot. It's a lot of stars coming out. The Gagency is going to be a big, a big uh, draw. Oh, yeah. We're going up, How do you get people to fight and be cool with each other after? That's crazy. Cause okay, cause, guys, we got to go because um, yeah, yeah, Ange has a real show. So you should uh, tune cool in right and. Um, make yeah, sure you follow way up with Angela Yee. All right, guys. Yeah, Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. All right, East Side. I appreciate y'all. Thank right. you. Going up. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that right, um, my daughter's probably getting restless. Right? All right, go so ahead. I'm guessing that the Jasmine brand is an actual co-host on the show because here's the thing: when Angela Yee first got started with the show. I didn't know if the Jasmine brand was just kind of there because though because those two ladies they actually they actually have a um they actually have a um partnership and they bought like an apartment complex um to help out women um and and homeless people so they buy investment property so I thought she would just be there for like the first week but it looks like um, the Jasmine brand's a regular regular schmegula um, co-host on the show if that's the case congratulations um on that for sure 
Um, as I'm looking here on the Jasmine brand, look, look, look right here. Look right here. We already talked about that here on Virtual Tour Live, Jasmine brand. Like, I got ahead of y'all. <laughs> I love the Jasmine brand. I use them quite often. Um, you know what I mean? So, they're the same in just in different just in different fonts. I think they meant to say in different shades, but child, I cannot. I cannot. So let's talk about this, right? Exclusive, 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 exclusive. The Jasmine brand exclusively reports that Robin Dixon allegedly will not will allegedly not be returning for the upcoming season. Network sources tell us that production is shaking up the cast trying to revive the series. And listen, and Candace isn't either. Candace is not returning either. Hang on. Now this came now this came out from People magazine, people.com after six seasons. But here's the thing though, and I I'm going to give my take on Candace before Robin. Okay? Right here. So it says here as I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have definitely fueled this journey. Dilla Bassett said, 37, with a whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I've decided to take a break from Real Housewives of Potomac. She says, going, she's, she goes on tease that her exit might only be temporary, knowing that this is not a farewell, but a see you later. Um, the drive back Sontras ends her note with message of thanks um, to her fans. Your unwavering support has been my guide and light. I look forward to the exciting features that lie ahead. More importantly, sharing them with all of you. Here's the thing with Candace, right? Candace was very responsible with her time. Um, let's see, they drinking early. That's my new favorite tequila. I have people meeting at the door at 6 a.m. That's where they can sell beer and liquor. I hope they have plans to save the alcohol for later. They probably do. And like I said, when you get up to that level, they could probably, you know what? Honestly, tell you the truth, this is what I would probably do. Because James Gordon had a deal with Heineken, the beer company Heineken, where they had like a Heineken bar on the set of The Late Late Show. Just have a Hornitos bar at iHeart Studios in New York City <sighs> with a bartender. And there you go. That That's what we called a branding sponsorship partnership guys hashtag i give game for free anyway um with candace i truly feel that she used her platform responsibly like she put in the work of you know wanting to be a singer acting um y'all know that she was in an all-black series so she's been doing the work and you know here's the thing right with candace taking a break mia can't mia can't do anything to candace because remember when Mia called Candace low budget, I'm like, Mia, you're calling her, you called her music video low budget, but yet you, but yet you left Gordon and you married him for money. Pot, meat, kettle, hypocrite. Hashtag doing the most, Mia. Um, just saying, so with Candace being gone, what is Giselle going to do? Because you can't use her husband anymore for feeling uncomfortable. You can't use Candace anymore. So I think Candace is going to have a very successful career. And honestly, and honestly, tell you the truth. Oh, no. Oh, dude. I'm a manager at a gas station. Say something for later. Others might drink right then, buy gum, and go back to work. I cannot with you. And Gordon does have a calming personality. And I remember when, um, and I remember when um, Gordon said, um, you know, go, you know, go to the circus or something like that. Like, here's the thing, right? I believe that even though things happen to people, that doesn't mean that they're not good people, right? Because we all have said, he or she has to cast the first stone. But Mia, you left him because the money dried up. And you went to this brother named Incognito. We talked about him. He's a radio personality in Atlanta. And apparently y'all were friends back in the day and stuff like that but like child you think that you know running a orthopedic um running an orthopedic place is hard being the wife of a radio personality or being the girlfriend of a radio personality is not easy you should ask ashley silva and dj quick how their relationship is 
Because apparently Ashley Silva says she's quitting. Child, why would you quit the only show that you will ever have exposure to be bigger on? Because Quick is bigger than you. Just like Incognito is bigger than Mia Thorin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because in radio, you have to have it. Either you have it or you don't. Child. I'm just saying. But anyway, let's get back on Robin because I'm really excited now. I really am excited. Let's see. And I'll tell you the reasons why I am excited about it, right? So everyone's been saying that Robin has been with um, Juan who cheats on her, right? And in the words of coming pick Roberto Juan's roommate, it's been time for her to go. Like, you went behind a paywall with Trazel talking about your story. And y'all were judging everybody else's husband. So now, if Giselle comes back, you ain't got Candace to drag. You ain't got your best friend, Robin. Now it's on you. Now it's on you. And even though, even though Candace would have been able to come back and drag Giselle, I understand why she's leaving. Because guess what? To be honest with you, Candace has more of a career ahead of her than Giselle does. Real talk. And by the way, Ashley and Giselle, would y'all please stop trying to make a dollar out of 15 cent? You have a podcast called Reasonably Shady that Eminem is suing y'all for. I hope Eminem wins. If I was the judge, I would give Eminem the win just so y'all could actually work. Because good damn, y'all don't do shit. You don't. Like, people are going to go buy 7th Avenue before a clothing line from Ashley and Giselle. People are going to go to Savage Fenty and buy stuff from Rihanna before y'all. People are going to go buy Baby Fat before y'all. Like, really, just because you have a name and because you have a platform doesn't mean what you're going to do is going to work. Good damn. Good. Robert Ben need to go and take Gizzer and Neckbone with you. Oh, my God. Not Neckbone and Gizzard. Oh, my God. And this is why I said here, let's see how it's going to be without Candace and Robin. Good uh, good about time. She can take Giselle and NECA with her. Now Juan can cheat in peace. I bet her and Juan Dixon will divorce um, quietly sooner or later. So Robin is robbing us of a lackluster storyline, whatever we go into do. It's about time she got kicked off. Good rids. Get rid of Candace and Wendy. No, 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 no. Wendy, Wendy deserves to say. Because her, her her soul and essence, you're not going to find it anybody else. And don't even give me NECA. NECA can go too with her shrine self. You so focus on what somebody is praying about you at their shrine, you ain't even focused on your shrine responsibilities of what you need to be taking care of in your own household. Chazelle should follow suit. They're codependent anyways. Buy boring and take your high yellow puppet master with you. Oh, good day. Monique can stay where she's at. And of course, this person, Music Is B. By the way, shout out to Music Is B here. Um, Brandy Jackson. Um, beautiful profile picture, by the way. Let's see here. You know, we, we showcase goodness around here. She's an alto. And she is a singer, by the way. And there she is. Here. She looked like Fantasia Marino a little bit. Does she look like Fantasia with the haircut and the curves right there? She look a little bit like Fantasia Marino. Well, the reason why I brought her up is because she said, where is Carlos King and his life? I need it now. And of course, y'all know, <sighs> Carlos King jumped right on it and said tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, I'm not going to sit here in front. Even though even though Carlos does too damn much on other shows, he has talked about Giselle and Robin um, in Potomac. And so listen, listen, I would not be surprised even though Robin says she will not do any interviews, I would not be surprised if Carlos King interviews Robin Dixon. Would not be surprised. But you know, but you know where the first interview is going to be? Is going to be on their podcast, Reasonably Shady, of why she ain't coming back next season. 
<laughs> I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And listen, I know Giselle is getting her comments lit up with how you know what? Actually, let's go with Giselle's comments. See, right, see, look, look right here. I would love for Carlos King to interview Robin. That would be so great, but I doubt she'll be transparent. See, great mind sing alike, child. Great mind sing alike. Let's let's see. Let's see Giselle. Let's see here, because I know they probably line her behind up. Hang on, y'all. One quick second. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hey y'all, that was so T Talk with your girl called me because we were talking last night and I, w I, I was saying to her, I'm on live talking about the housewife. She was like, Boy, go back to work. <laughs> but I said, Listen, I will always answer the phone for T Talk because me and her are fam. So, you know, listen, for some people, they don't understand why some people get along with us and other people don't. It's not about the quantity of things you can do for a person, but it's the quality of the person that you are. Amen. Praise him. Hallelujah. Now, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this right here. Because it says here, you're a flip flopper. Um, are you against violence or not? Because it seems like you pick the side of whoever you like in at the moment. Um, right or wrong. That part. That part right there. That part right there. I totally agree with that. Why must you always bring the brown girls? I'm confused. The footage doesn't lie. When you're wrong, you're wrong. It doesn't matter if you're brown or light, black or white. So, yeah. I mean, listen, they're not flaming her up as of now, but I can only imagine... Um, somebody's gonna flame up the comments um you know when it comes to well what you gonna do now <laughs> what you gonna do now that you know your best friend rob ain't gonna be there <laughs> what goes around goes around comes back around back around well yeah i'm gonna turn on my camera now because i've done the whole show for over an hour <laughs> 
let me drop the link to see if y'all want to come on up. I know some of y'all are at work right now, so you may not be able to come on up. But we keep it consistent over here for you guys to have a voice over here. Now, of course, y'all know Real Housewives of Potomac Reunion aired um, Sunday. And y'all know we did the uh, Married to Medicine reviews. Um, well, yeah, we did the Married to Medicine reunion um, every Monday. So I'm going to do for Potomac, too, because y'all really seem to like me reviewing reunions and stuff and giving it to you real. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to do. So. So, yeah, I mean, listen, that that's the story that Robin Dixon will not be returned to Real Housewives of Potomac next season. Well, listen, it is what it is. And, you know, maybe this might be a good thing for Robin. That means she doesn't have to hear the criticism and everything else. She doesn't have, have to hear Roberto and all that stuff. Like, what? Andy did a joke. Um, hang, hang on. Andy Cohen. Robin Dixon joke. So, for those of you who don't know, there was a joke um, that happened here. It was during the Bravos, which was filmed Friday, November 3rd, and aired Sunday, November 5th. Andy made a quip um, about it was so good that the that Bravo paid for the hotel room, so why did it have to? And so her best friend Giselle said to Andy that I, I don't think that's I don't think that's a good joke. Um, and Giselle said, I didn't like that. Um, Giselle told US Weekly while at BravoCon, full disclosure, I saw him first before Robin and he asked me, should he do this joke or cut? I said, cut. He's like, yes, definitely brilliant. Cut it. We're going to cut it. But then Robin got to talk to Andy. Robin got to talk to Andy before the show and he's and then he sees her and she's like, put it in. Um, Giselle um, revealed with a laugh. I can laugh at myself. I can laugh at situations. Robin word for told um, us. Um, I know how ridiculous the situation sounds. I can laugh at that. And acknowledge it. And so, yeah, when Andy was like, I, there's a joke that I was going to put in. I was like, well, tell it to me. He told it to me. I was like, oh, yeah, put it in. Ciao. Well, let me talk about the monologue because I did tell a joke about Juan Dixon that was really savage. I said, um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and, you know, um, thanks for coming and, you know, bra thanks Bravo for paying our, thanks Bravo, you paid our hotel bills so Robin Dixon, so Juan Dixon didn't have to. Oh. Now, it was in the script the whole time. And I was like, now last year during my monologue, which was a little roasty, which they kind of are for award show openers. Um, and they, um, I, I had, I had last year told a joke about Jose Giselle's style that I just could tell from the, after I told it, she was bummed. She was not into yeah. it. And I wound up having them cut it from the airing of the show. Oh, come I felt on. Like I learned my lesson. So I was like, so I told uh, Andy, the team, I go, no. you know what? I'm going to no, call no, Robin. No, 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 That's not how that works, good sir. Giselle put herself on TV. Damn it, she gets joked about. I'm so damn tired of these reality stars feeling, oh my Lord, you can't do this. You can't do that. Don't talk about me this way. Give my good. It's like, oh, oh, you, you know, that happened, but you know that that was my pet. No. In the words of Roland Martin, if you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. No, Giselle has a big mouth and she talks about everybody else. No, that joke should have aired. Screw what Giselle thinks. She was up, she was happy that a black woman got a drink thrown in her face. That joke should have been said, Andy. 
Hell, I would have said it. I would have gave no dams, no ucks, or no ish about it. Sorry. What Jamal Bryan going to do? Ain't going to do a damn thing because he running around the congregation and, and sending baptisms through his congregants. Holy oil ain't the only thing splashing in the congregation. Mm-hmm. 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 Hallelujah ain't the only thing they screaming out. Ain't <sighs> me damn sick. Giselle was bummed. Okay, and she attended, didn't she? She knew. She knew that she was subjected to criticism. No, Andy, you don't. Screw Giselle. Screw Giselle. Hell. I'm going to run the joke by her, and then we'll see if it stays in. Because I was like, look, I don't want to piss someone off who's here and the whole thing. And it was a sensitive time in her life. Well, I didn't call her. I was like, you know what? This joke is too savage. We have to take it out. Take it out. Now it's like an hour before the Bravos. Here walks in Giselle. And I say, oh, Giselle, I really learned my lesson last year um, with that joke about you. There was a savage joke about Robin. And Oh, I saw her at BravoCon that day and told her this. I go and I took it out. It's too mean. She goes, oh, my God, you have to tell me the joke. So I tell her the joke. She goes, oh, Andy, that is so mean. Like, yeah, you're right to take that out. Great. Now it's an hour before the award show. Here's Robin Dixon. I go, well, learned my lesson last year. I go, there was a joke about you that was in there that was really mean. And I took it out. She goes, what's the joke? I told her laughing, laughing, laughing. She goes, that's hilarious. She goes, put it in. I go, I said, really? She goes, tell the joke. And I just want to give Robin Dixon my MVP award because that was so cool. I just thought that was super, super cool that she went with it. And, um, you know, I just loved it. There you go. There you go. There you go. And you know what? I will say this. You know, shout out to um shout out to Robin for being a good sport about it. I mean, you know, at least she um <laughs> you know, at least she, you know, knew that she was subjected to a joke at the Bravo since she is a Bravo celebrity. And you know, for Giselle, you know, being bummed about her being talked about, child, there are plenty of other people that have talked about your fashion. Karen has thought about your fashion. Social media has thought about your fashion. Like, come on now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Come on now. Anyway, child, I just, I just, no, I'm just saying it is what it is. Like, I, if you don't want the smoke, get off of TV. But if you own TV, you're going to get talked about. What we doing here? Good damn. And Giselle could not match me. I promise you that. I oh, I promise. Thank, thank God I wasn't her son. Cause oh, 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 buddy, you think reading is savage from a housewife? Oh my God, I would have to be on every reunion as Giselle's son. So you said your mama. So so Braylon, you said your mama Giselle um, doesn't have any um, doesn't have any weight to her in terms of her um, intelligence. No, I mean, that drink that got thrown had more liquid of energy than my mama's existence as Giselle. (sighs) You know how many people have been quiet on that set? (laughs) AT, talk with your girl, welcome in. You know how many people have been quiet on that set? You know how that ugly stare that Giselle gives would have been like, Did you really say this about me? Listen, in the words of my auntie Karen Hugo, I'm only judging what you're giving me, mama. And you are basically trash. I'm sorry. You got happy that a black woman got a drink thrown in her face, mama. Now, if I were to throw a drink in your face right now, mama Giselle, you would be pissed off at me as your son, right? Child, I just want people to be responsible for what the hell they do. Be accountable. Be responsible. That's it. That's all I'm saying. That's it. 
Oh, child, a lot going on, damn it, a lot going on. Oh, by the way, the um, the Fletchers went live, apparently. Brown Skin Girl just did a premiere um, on that. Then Shop Reality TV um, calls out Puppet Master, apparently. So, I mean, listen, I feel like Love and Mary Huntsville, this show is going to end after season seven. I just got a feeling. I really do. Like it. Because at this point, y'all, let me stop sharing the screen. Because at this point, like, what are we, what are we doing here? <laughs> This show gets more people upset than any other show I've ever seen. <laughs> like, at least with the Housewives, they are established people in their own right. That social media is a compliment to them. That social media fuels the show. But Love and Marriage Huntsville is a reality show that needs social media as the source for the show to stay on TV. That's that. That's not how reality TV is supposed to work. That's how not any show is supposed to work. Like, even with Power, right? Like, Power is an established drama series, right? But with all the Power content creators, right? They at least recognize that they are a resource to the show. And that the and that the writers listen to the content creators, but they don't follow what the content creators want. Because if they follow what they want, then there's no channel for them to have to talk about Power. Like, what are we doing here? Just saying, but child, it's got to end after season seven. Like if it, if it, if it don't, then child, I, I don't know what we're gonna do because I think everybody's really tired of the show at this point, really. And I try my very best to still hold out hope um, for you know goodness to happen. Um, you know what I mean for the Oprah Winfrey Network. And like I said, the new show, um, the new show that never ever met uh, hearing Friday recognizing their power of that, you know, own is a land of reruns. It is. It is a land of reruns, sadly. And they need more content. You know what I mean? So by the way, y'all just saw some breaking news here that I want to talk about with you guys. Literally, this is breaking news. Um, just broke on Deadline.com. Let me get the shared screen back up. Yes, please drive home safely, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Breaking news, y'all. So, as y'all know, the Golden Globes um, was um, on, on CBS um, this year, right? And so here it is here, breaking news. Golden Globes to say with CBS with a five-year deal, Network picks up American Music Awards. Now, for those of you who don't remember the American Music Awards or the AMAs, American Music Awards, because we give y'all the tea over here. We give y'all the behind the scenes in a way that you probably won't get anywhere else. So, so there's a thing from Dick Clark Productions, right? Productions. So Dick Clark Productions pretty much produces um, American Man Stand, New Year's Rock and Eve, the American Music Awards. So I want to give y'all the history of the American Music Awards here. Okay, here it is here. So this was so this was created by Dick Clark for ABC when the contract when the network's contract to air the Grammy Awards expired. So the Grammy Awards used to be on ABC. And so it's produced by um, Dick Clark Productions. From 1973 to 2005, both the winners and nominations were selected by the music industry um, based on commercial performance 
such as sales and airplay. Since 2006, winners have been determined by a poll of the public and fans who can vote for the AMAs website. The AMAs were created by Dick Clark in 1973 to compete with the Grammy Awards after that move of that year's show to Nashville, Tennessee that led to CBS, which has broadcasted all the Grammy Awards since then, picking up Grammy, the Grammy telecast after its first two in 1971 and 1972, which was on ABC. In 2014, the American network Telemundo acquired the rights to produce a Spanish language version of the American Music Awards and launched the Lab Music Awards um, in 2015. From 1973 to 2005, both the winners and nominations were selected by members of the music industry based on commercial um, performance such as sales and airplay. Since 2006, winners have been selected, deter have been determined by a poll of the public and fans who can throw it through the AMA's website. Um, while nominations have um, remained based on sales, airplay, and now include um, activity on social networks and video viewing. Before 2010, nominations have only been based on sales, airplay, and nominated for every work even old. Um, the Grammys have had nominate have had nominated Grammys have nominations based on the vote of the Academy and only nominate a work from the eligibility period that changes often. The award statuette is manufactured by the New York Firm Society Awards. So I say all that because right here, the network picks up the American Music Awards. So we'll, so the, the AMAs, even though it was created for ABC, will no longer be on ABC. And NBC used to host the Golden Globes all the time. It was a very long contract. So there was some things with the Ameri with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association in terms of racism um, and 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 you know membership and all that type of stuff, and so they didn't know where they were going to go. I think the Golden Globe streamed one year on YouTube, and then CBS picked it up um, for this past year's Golden Globes, and it was one of the highest rated for CBS. So I am very surprised here too. Two months after the Golden Globes aired on CBS for the first time in more than four decades, the network has closed a new five-year deal to continue the award show and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. <sighs> the problem is Paramount is up for sale. Mm -hmm. I will show y'all that in just a little bit uh, jesus christ um the new agreement announced by george cheeks president and ceo of cbs and jay pinsky chairman and ceo of deadline parent um pinsky me and dick clark productions um by the way dick clark productions was a separate entity until pinsky media um bought dick clark productions um kicks off with the january 2025 broadcast the pact also includes the american music awards moved to cbs both award shows are owned and produced by dick clark productions the early long-term renewal of the golden globes is in contrast to the one-year pact which cbs closed less than two months before the january 7th show it recognizes the broadcast range success with the A first Golden Globes averaging 9,960,000 million viewers. Um, live seven um, plus seven up nearly from 50 percent um, from last year's low on NBC. The ceremony's largest audience since 2020. The telecast with CBS used to promote its launch of its lineup following the strikes, and it was also the third ever largest live stream CBS um, special event on Paramount Plus in um ama average um, minute audience reach follow following the gold golden globes rebound and the 2024 grammys on cbs the oscars on abc have also delivered their biggest audience since 2020. cbs collaborations with the gold with the globes for this year's broadcast was a big win for both of us and established strong momentum for award shows in 2024 cheek said the golden the globes or one of a kind of live event that adds another marquee special and valuable promotional platform to CBS annual calendar. I'm excited to expand the partnership with Jay and the entire team to continue to drive the globes forward. The rain spike and the cultural um, and the pop culture impact of the 2024 ceremony, which created a number of viral moments, were likely to spark new interest and potential bidding for the rights of the Golden Globe telecast. Still with the right offer, CBS was expected to have the inside track. The network took a chance on the globes when the award franchise was in flux was in flux coming off of all-time ratings low on nbc and tumultuous last couple of years marked by controversy and a june ownership 
um, changed from the award show now owned by Dick Clark Productions, where it's turned into commercial enterprise and the foreign and the Hollywood Foreign Press Association dissolved. Not only did CBS step in, the network also commit to the Golden Globes of Big Waste slaying it behind a NFL doubleheader, which boosted ratings and supported with a major uh, market campaign. Those circumstances were acknowledged by Penske. We are so proud to call CBS our home for the Golden Globes, he said. Um, CBS stepped up for the Golden Globes during a very challenging time and inherently understood um, its value while having the foresight, imagination, and conviction to bring this iconic show to its many platforms. We long admire CBS' commitment to show to some of the greatest cultural life events and partnering for the long term further um for the long term further cements the show's legacy and incredible place in history before this year the golden Globes, which were available in more than 185 countries worldwide had aired on cbs in 1961 62 the 2024 ceremony introduced two new uh, categories cinematic and box office achievement and best stand-up comedian on television today marks a significant milestone for the globes as we solidify um, our partnership with cbs and paramount plus for the next five years said helen um, home president of the golden globes we are incredibly proud of the artists regard 2024 and look forward to building upon the immense success to to make these a second annual golden globes the best and most memorable show yet the link the exact link for cbs pickup of the american music awards is unclear we're also thrilled that the American Music Awards has found its home on CBS, said a PMC spokesperson. This multi-year alliance brings one of Dick Clark's production's most coveted fan-centric awards to CBS. The American Music Awards, like I told you guys, were created by Dick Clark with the network's contract to air the Grammy Awards expired. Has been a staple in the network for decades. ABC's most recent contract with ended with the November 22 telecast. The AMAs are now joined the Grammys on CBS roster of music award shows. Hey, Lynette still welcome and glad to have you here. Um, yes, please be safe for sure. Yeah, no, I feel it. You got you got to step back. And honestly, that part, I've heard about the beef center. Child Lord help. Lynette Stiller. Hi, Lynette. Welcome in. So here's why I think, right? I think the Golden Globes is essential to the award show season, right? Because the Golden Globes is more of this big Hollywood party. Everybody's at table drinking champagne. And then the Oscars and the um, SAG Awards, they're more sit-down events. So it does open up award show season a very, um, very conversational, very um, hu human and very... Um... Okay, I'm this. A very nonchalant way of saying, hey, listen, we're here celebrating ourselves, right? It's kind of a hee hee ha ha kid kid of an award show. Just say, hey, listen, this is how award show should be, but it's not. So I understand that. The thing about the American Music Awards, I don't understand it because <sighs> you already have the Grammys, right? And so this kind of makes me wonder what is going to happen to, you know, really anything and everything else like the Billboard Music Awards. Um, the Billboard Music Awards were on ABC from 2011 to 2017, um, along with the AMAs. And then the Billboard Music Awards were on NBC from 2018 to 2022. So my thing is this. <laughs> so my thing is this. Will the Billboard Music Awards come back to ABC? Because in 2023, Billboard announced that it would just be on a on their digital platform. So the Billboard Music Awards, the Billboard Music Awards was an was streamed live on was streamed live on um Billboard um, YouTube channel. Bill Board. Hang on, y'all. I'm trying to get up for y'all. Bill Ward. No. So here it is here. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, y'all. I'm sorry. Hang on. Music Awards 2023. 
Anyway, I can't seem to find it. But the point that I'm saying is, why do y'all need another music award show when you have the Grammys? Like, the Grammys is like the pinnacle of Hollywood in terms of, you know, the music industry. So I don't know why you guys would need another music award show. Um, unfortunately, TV is slowly but surely fading out. Streaming is a new way to watch program. I agree. I absolutely agree. Like, Miss Universe, for example, was on Fox, right? And then it moved over to Hulu. So I definitely agree that streaming is the new way to go. The problem with streaming is, well, there's a great benefit to streaming that you don't have to wonder about the world because in the world, you can get a Roku, you can get a Fire Stick, you can get a Chromecast or Apple TV, right? But the same token, there's nothing like promotion, right? So with abc they have good morning america they have live with kelly and kelly and mark they have um tamron hall they have the view they have gma3 right so that network gives that backing right so so now what i'm trying to figure out is what is abc going to do with a music award show to me that's why i'm kind of wondering here so here is the programming from from abc and then here are the award shows so you have the oscars you have the cmas the country music awards you have the rock and roll ceremony and the espy awards now bringing back the billboard music awards you mm, so so you 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 could do that but only a billboard would because it because here's the thing right if you're going to bring the billboard music awards back you should bring it back to abc but stream it live on hulu and disney plus as well if you're going to do that so that way there's different ways to um there's different ways to watch it right now i will say one award show that i think would actually um, work. Let me see here. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Now, this is just me. Actually, you know what? Two award shows. I know that. Now, my rambling comes greatness. Give me time, y'all. I'm just trying to make sure I covered all my bases, child. Music magazines. Magazines frequently mentioned on the web include Rolling Stone, The Fader, Billboard, and others. Hmm. Because I'm trying to see something here. Trying to see something. I right, know. Give me a moment. No, not even that. Not even that. Not even that. Okay. So these are the two award shows that I'm thinking of. Okay. Now here is this one: the iHeartRadio Music Awards. Now listen. For the first two years, this was broadcasted on NBC. And then from 2016 to 2018, it was simulcast on TBS, TNT, and True TV. And then it was aired on Fox. So this has jumped around a lot, right? And it's been on Fox presently. Now, I think that ABC and iHeartRadio could be a great partnership. I'll tell you why, right? imagine if you will you have a imagine if you will you have good morning america live from the iheart radio music awards right you have the view live from the iheart radio music awards you have tamron hall you have live with kelly and ryan you have gma3 right and the oscars are the oscars right not to mention too iheart radio simulcasted on all iheart radio stations 
So just imagine if Good Morning America had a I had an iHeart Radio station, GMA Radio, through the iHeart Radio platform. Imagine if the View had a View Radio station through the iHeart platform. Okay, just just a thought, just a thought, or or now I know this is on BET, y'all. So don't at me, okay? Do not at me. But hey, Soul Train Music Awards. Now listen, the reason why I say this, okay? Now I know what y'all are thinking. Braylon, they ain't gonna do that. Okay, okay. Give me a moment, cause y'all know I pull up my receipts on anything and everything. Y'all know I do. Y'all know I do. Let me see. So, let's go through these here, okay? Go back. Because I'm going to show you all something. Here it is here. The NAACP Image Awards aired on NBC in 2013, right? Okay. Now, you don't have a black award show. You don't. Soul Train is a is still one of the most longest running shows in television history. It's right up there with American Bandstand, right? Let's just say I wanted to bring back Soul Train. If I was an executive at ABC, I would say, hey, listen, let's do a five-year deal with the Soul Train Music Awards, which will then in turn bring back Soul Train to ABC. Just a thought. Just a thought. So we've got the iHeartRadio Music Awards as a show that ABC could take on. We've got the Soul Train Music Awards that could lead to Soul Train on ABC. And as I was thinking about y'all, Don't at me with what I'm, with what I'm about to suggest to y'all. Don't at me. Okay, you can at me, but after I say it. <laughs> Sirius XM Radio. They do not have a Sirius XM Music Awards. They do not. They do not have it. Okay, now... Here's the thing, okay? I'll show y'all how this, I'm gonna show y'all how I work, I'm gonna work this thing. Now, this was right here. This was the Golden Mickey for Radio Disney, right? So they had the Radio Disney Music Awards, the RDMAs, right? And this was only on, this. they began televising on Disney Channel. They would tape it. Um, so Radio Disney ceased operations, right? So imagine, if you will, imagine this award right here. Okay, follow me now. And let me bring up the Sirius XM logo. Imagine, if you will. Come on, logo. Work with me, not against me, please. There we go. Now imagine this logo right here on this award, right? Just a thought. Just a thought. Let me see if I can do this live. Hang on. Let me see if I can do this live. Let me see what y'all say. I listen to all the news shows while I'm driving in on the TuneIn app. I listen to NBC news shows while I'm on there. See, I'll, uh, see I forgot about all the soap. See, see y'all, I forgot about the Soul Train Awards. Exactly, exactly. Y'all give me one moment. Um, Golden Mickey statuette. We do images. Radio Disney. Radio Disney.
Okay. There we go there. Saving my jazz. I'm going to do this live. I'm going to do this live, you guys. So give me a moment. Y'all know whatever I do, it's always something out the way, but it's usually on purpose. Let me go into camera. Create design. And y'all will see what I'm trying to do here in just a minute, because there's, there's a reason why I'm saying the Sirius XM um, Music Awards could happen. Okay. Okay. So let me do my lights. My good old blue lights. Hopefully y'all enjoying y'all Monday. Hopefully y'all are enjoying the show right now. I am doing a little magic on um, Canva here. Just to show you guys what this could be with this award. Edit photo, background removal, or remover rather. All right, so there we go there. Now I just need the logo of Sirius XM. background removal okay so i'm going to show y'all this now wait a minute can i copy that no i can't i'll come with mine but i was trying to do it wait maybe maybe let me duplicate that a couple of times hang on y'all y'all see why me in a second hang on i know i don't do anything without purpose most of the time. That'll work. Come on now. No, I can't do it. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I'll download this. Send it to myself on the Facebook. Sorry, y'all stay a little long. I was trying to was trying to do a little something extra. Don't at me. <laughs> Don't at me, y'all. Let me see. Facebook. Okay. File. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so imagine the Sirius XM Awards, right? And you got the Sirius XM logo in the middle of this golden Mickey, right? And then you have the Sirius XM Awards in partnership with ABC. It's just a thought, guys. It's just a thought, okay? Just, just saying, you know what I mean? Of course, you keep the golden Mickey. Um... And you know you can put the serious stars on the um you can put the serious stars where is it here where is it you can put the serious um logo on the headphones on the outside of the headphones here you could probably do the serious xm logo right here on the base and then the serious xm um awards right here so that's just the thought so the serious xm ray awards live on abc that's just a thought. That's so the iHeartRadio Music Awards, the Sirius XM Music Awards live on ABC, and the Soul Train Music Awards on ABC. So, since I love having fun with y'all, let's do a little poll, shall we? Let's do a little poll. Shh. 
should be on A, B, C. Bill Ford, which was on A, B, C. Oh, sorry, y'all. I can I can spell. <laughs> so train music awards. I heart radio music awards. S I R I U S X M music awards. All right, y'all. Here is your poll question here. Which award show or music award show should be on ABC? Billboard, which was on ABC, the Soul Train Music Awards, the iHeartRadio Music Awards, or the Sirius XM Music Awards? So I, the poll is in the chat. Um, if you guys want to give your take on that, I'm going to turn off my camera now because now I have done the whole show for over two hours. But yeah, it's just a thought, guys. Okay, so I got one vote for the Soul Train Music Awards. I got the iHeartRadio Music Awards. Okay, all right. I'm seeing 50-50 right now for iHeart and Soul Train. Okay. Interesting. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, then. Okay, I'll leave that poll up for a good minute because, you know, the tides can change around here, as they often do. The tides can change. So I'm curious, so the two people that voted that, if you're in the chat, could you give your reasons why of Soul Train or iHeart? Because I really am curious of this conversation. Um. Because here's the thing, I know my media brain is a legend by itself, but also too, I think of, you know, shows, award shows like this from a producer media point of view. But I'm also a consumer and a fan, so but I would love to hear from y'all what what gave y'all the energy to vote for those award shows. Is it because of what I said, or is it because of you know I heart being um a big platform with a lot of radio stations that will be easy to promote the award show with abc or do y'all like the idea of soul train actually coming back to tv and that can be coupled um on abc all right so three votes now 67 percent soul train music awards 33 percent i heart radio music awards okay And ABC is a bigger platform than BET, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, I know. And by the way, I know BET owns the rights to Soul Train. I vote for Soul Train because the show itself is a classic. I grew up watching Soul Train. Okay. Okay. I receive that. So 67% for Soul Train Music Awards. Now, if the Soul Train Music Awards did come to ABC, would you guys actually watch it, though? That's the real question. And trust me, it would be the blackest award show they've ever had on ABC. <laughs> but you know what, though? Honestly, and I haven't really thought about this. You would. You would watch the Soul Train Music Awards on ABC. Okay. I'm going to DM Lady B and Nikki News with something. And now I'm just, I'm just asking a question here. Let's see. 
train. All right, Nikki News, Lady B. I'm going to even message she talk with your girl as well. Y'all check y'all Instagrams and let me know if y'all think that that spinoff of Soul Train would be a good idea. I think it would show diversity if ABC could if a if ABC have Soul Train Awards show on their platforms. Okay. And the reason why, and and, and I'm not gonna say what the spinoff of the Soul Train Music Awards is, because I know good to damn well if I say it, it will probably be it, it, child, child child if i if i say the title of what i'm thinking of for the spinoff of the soul train music awards i know somebody will take it and run with it all i'm going to say there is the naacp image awards I, that's it that that is your biggest clue that i can give of why i dm'd um nikki news and lady b and t talk with your girl that's the biggest clue i can give i can't give anymore i cannot give anymore because well, I'm probably going to do this. I'm probably going to try to find somebody at Soul Train with the brand to see if they actually want to do that extension. <clears throat> okay. Just, just saying. Hang on, y'all. I'm hashtag something. Seventy-five percent now. Soul Train Music Awards. You guys are liking that, and twenty-five percent the iHeart Radio Music Awards. There, iHeart sponsor red carpet shows. Um, red sponsor on the red carpet for some of the award shows that is very true that is very true let me message she talk with your girl t talk with your girl there okay all right duly noted i got it i got it mm-hmm and all y'all know I got to do is just find a Soul Train um, Music Awards press release and figure out who to contact. Y'all know how I do by now. <laughs> That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, here. There we go. The only problem is because BET owns it, there would have to be some agreement with ABC. But, but. I feel to me that if I somehow were able to pull this off, <sighs> um, that because it's an extension or a spinoff, that they really couldn't do that. Because if they really wanted to at BET, they would have done it by now. But BET has the BET Awards. So they wouldn't be upset by the spinoff um, award for the Soul Train Um awards franchise so what do i always tell y'all what do i always tell y'all what do i always tell y'all there are opportunities out here you just have to find the doors 
That's it. You just got to find the doors. That's it. You know what? Listen, I said why I said Steve Harvey got a damn check. Steve Harvey got a damn check. Hell. Y'all remember his hosting skills with that versus with Earth, Wind, and Fire, the Isley Brothers. This is baby making music. <laughs> Everybody didn't like Steve's hosting. So, you know, and listen, he's hosted the Neighborhood Awards. You know, I mean, we talked about the Neighborhood Awards, you know, before. And, you know, I said the Neighborhood Awards could come back. And, you know, Steve did host the Celebration Gospel on BET. But I'm going to just say this. <laughs> I think for now, now if he wants to do the Soul Train Music Awards and host it, I think Steve Harvey could. But for the thing that I DM'd Lady B and Nikki News and Tea Talk with your girl, that extension of the Soul Train Music Awards, you're going to need a Braylon Lee to host it. You're going to need a Braylon Lee to host it. I'm going to tell you why. Because for one, I'm just saying, I got an old soul, so I'll be able to relate to all the black celebrities in the room. Number two, Steve Harvey is in a position now where he is known, known, right? So he can't really go there in terms of commentary and talking to the celebrities, even though, even though he's Steve Harvey, he says one wrong thing, he could lose everything. And with this extension, you need somebody who can build out the show, who can build out this franchise. So that's that's just, that's just me. That's just my take on it. Because what I am saying behind the scenes is this is an extension idea that I'm thinking of. This is an extension idea that I'm thinking of. So. Jesse Collins Entertainment. Got it. And you know what? I've actually, um, believe it or not, I've actually called. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, I actually called Connie Orlando from BET. Um, Connie Orlando, who's the um, executive vice president for music programming, uh, music strategy. Um, I actually called her because when the BET sale was happening, um, I actually asked her if she wanted to come in on she wanted to come on Clubhouse and talk about it. Um, but of course she could not um because you know conflict of interest and things like that, right? So but yeah, like I said, when I say I've I've reached out to people, I, I don't have to play it by my receipts. No, I do not. Um and remember when I told y'all that Paramount could be sold, right? So this is why I'm kind of kind of leery about you know what's going on here. So if it got sold into pieces, it's made up of three segments, film, TV, TV, me, and direct to consumer streaming. So TV media is Paramount Global's largest segment at 68% of the 2023 revenue, but steadily declined over the past several years. Last year, it pulled in revenue of 20.1 billion down 8% and 4.79 billion of adjusted operating income down 12%. The fast growing direct to consumer segment, 22% of 2023 revenue had 6.74 billion in revenue up 37% and adjusting operating loss of 1.66 billion improvement um over um minus uh 1.82 billion 2022 so you have the filmed entertainment which is paramount pictures paramount players paramount players is a division of um paramount i think that was for more black and my pock um companies um or film or film production companies because Sal perry had to deal with paramount players paramount animation nickelodeon studio awesomeness and mirror act Miramax. If you don't know Miramax, that was under Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> um, so you have that. Then you have TV media. You have CBS Television Network, CBS Television Stations, 29 broadcast stations. Then you have Paramount Media Networks, which is CMT, Comedy Central, Logo, MTV, Nickelodeon, Paramount Network, Paramount Plus with Showtime Network, Pop TV, Smithsonian, 
um, Channel TV Land, BT Media Group, International Free to Air Networks, Network Channel Australia, Channel 5 in the UK, Tel Aviv in Argentina, in Chile, Vision in Chile, um, CBS Sports Networks, and then you have the studios, CBS Studio, Showtime, MTV Entertainment Studios, including MTV Documentary Films, Paramount T Television Studios, and CBS Me Adventures, which is a syndicated arm. So if you are buying the Grammys, so if you're buying the AMAs, right, the American Music Awards, and you already have the Grammys, and you also got a five-year deal with the Golden Globes, if CBS Television Network gets sold, right, then what is going to happen to those deals? Because now you're dealing with a new owner that may or may not want those award shows. So when I say that sometimes I do wonder about the game, I really do wonder about the game. There's an effort to downplay the importance of black people on all fronts, though. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Without question. Um, I said, well, I said, I totally agree with you, beautiful. Um, let me get back to the story here. And then, of course, direct to consumer, Paramount, um, Paramount Plus, Pluto TV, and also um, BET Plus. But BET Plus will go with VH1 and um, BET. So, for those of you who don't know, VH1 was under MTV's control, but VH1 then switched under to BET's control. So, that's why I'm saying, like, with these moves, I kind of wonder if Paramount is going to be sold in parts, then what's going to happen to everything that is connected to those different, you know, sectors of Paramount. So that's just me though. Here is Jesse Collins Entertainment here. Soul Train Awards, as y'all see. BET Hip Hop Awards, the um, BET Honors, Evening of Stars. The Emmys, the Oscars, so. And then you got Make Contact right here, so you can make contact with them. Now, like I said, I don't know if the um, if the Soul Train Awards would ever, I mean ever, um, air on ABC. But I do think that there are opportunities for um, extensions of award shows. Just like um, People's Choice, they had the People's Choice Country um, Awards. So that extensions happen all the time of different award shows. So. So yeah, here it is there, as you can see. All right, all good, all good. I'll probably end the show here. I think I think we covered everything. That was a good show, right? That was a very good show. Very, very big show, if I do say so myself. So with that being said, I thank each and every single one of you for um, being here with me. I love y'all. I value y'all. I appreciate y'all so, so much. Um, like I said, tonight will be Real Housewives of Potomac um, Part 1. Of course, I will be reviewing that. Um, and I'll be reviewing that every Monday, just like um, Married to Madison, because y'all really enjoy that. So enjoy the fireworks for the day that's coming your way. I'll see you back here tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern for um, Real Housewives of Potomac. One love, much love, all love. I'll give y'all a commercial break. And the fireworks. One love, much love, all love. I feel the love. I send it right back to you. Bye, everybody. This is for all you multi-talented, multitasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Find your glory, write your story, feel this beat will care.
enjoy your Zoa. <laughs> uh, no applause? <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> <laughs> Now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. chicken like you do with my slow marinated hand breaded Popeye's bonafide chicken. And right now it's Love That Chicken Month at Popeye's with two big pieces and a biscuit for just $2.99. So what are you waiting for? Come get some of my world famous chicken and raise your mighty voices. Love That Chicken from Popeye's. New Orleans don't make a lick of sense to most people. A big city built below sea level that throws logic out the window and beads to strangers. And our chicken is no different. A fast food restaurant selling fried chicken that takes 12 hours to marinate? That makes no sense. But it does make delicious. The best recipe for big flavor ain't about logic. Because you know magic when you see it or when you taste it. We don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Welcome to Copeland's. Copeland's is not just some fancy place for your big night out. In fact, there's no occasion too big. Or if you like, too small. Copeland's. There's always something good. Welcome to Copeland's. Copeland's is not just some fancy place for your big night out. In fact, there's no occasion too big. Or if you like, too small. Copeland's. There's always something good. ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this a 
waves. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace.